Hello community. I was offline for five days and my goodness, what happened? So I tried to understand what happened in the last week. And if you want, hey, why not join me? Let's start with the new chips that have been introduced. Meta introduced here the next generation Meta Training and Inference Accelerator. Those are here the specifications. And of course here for a PyTorch runtime compiler and and and. But they also here created a further Triton MTIA compiler backend for the high performance code. Beautiful. Intel presented Gaudi 3, its own AI accelerator, as you can see here. And they say, hey, it is faster than our NVIDIA H100. We have a faster inference, a faster training time, and a better power efficiency than NVIDIA. Well, of course. Nice thing is the wait time if you have ordered an NVIDIA H100 is down now to 12 weeks from multiple months. And this just cost you 40,000 US dollars. All the new chips should be available operational in the cloud in the third quarter of this year. And Intel tells us, well, in 2026, they expect that about 50% of the AI computation will happen on edge devices and not in the cloud. Of course, we have Google. And you notice we have now here a new TPU and it is the V5P with the specifications, beautiful. But a real nice CPU by Google is now ARM-based. They call it Axion, and they will use it here based on ARM Neoverse version 2, yes, yes, yes. They will use this for a web and app server, for microservices, for the databases, for data analytics engine, for media processing, YouTube, and so on. So you see, all the big global players are building their own but if you are interested to do it, not in the cloud, but locally on your, let's say, Apple, for the Apple MLX community with more than a thousand team members, we have here the latest Mistral 22B here. We have 8x22B here. We have the Sapphire Orpo 141B here in 8-bit. So there's a very active community if you're interested. And days ago, they already started fine-tuning here our Mixed 12 8x22B with, of course, QLORA on a single M2 Ultra chip. Unbelievable. The Apple community is simply great. And, of course, looking a little bit here into the rumors, we see that we expect here a new M4 chip from Apple, maybe late 2024. And what I was really interested in was here from Macworld because it was sorted the M4 chip steps up from current 192 gigabyte of shared memory to 256 gigabyte. And here Macworld tells us, well, maybe it is up to 512 gigabyte of shared memory, CPU, GPU, and NPU. Can you imagine 512 gigabyte? of almost VRAM here on a local laptop. I am loving it. Of course, you have to mention here NVIDIA and the latest rumor that I missed here was the 5090. And unfortunately, there were some rumor that we're gonna jump from 24 gigabytes to 48. But according to this latest article, we are back to 32 gigabyte VRAM. Okay. This is it here if you're interested to run your LLMs locally. Next thing is we have new large language model. My goodness, how could this happen in five days? Now, what is the best LLM today, April 13th, 2024? We have, we have a new GPT-4 Turbo version and this is of course year number one. I would say equal with Claude 3 Opus. Then we have Gemini Pro, where I would neglect for the moment Gemini Pro, this specific one, because the 1.5 Pro is out now. Then we have here the Claude 3 Sonnet, I would say similar to the Command R Plus. You see here, this has here a very specific kind of an open license. And then we have Haiku and Mistral Large and QN. Beautiful. So here we have our best performance LLM. Great. Now, if I want to access this and I'm sitting here in Vienna, Austria, in Europe, 
and I go here to Google AI Studio and I say launch Google AI Studio and I want to access Gemini 1.5 Pro, I get, yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> only available in certain regions and in certain languages. And if I have a look, well, it is available in Australia, but not in Austria. It is not available in Germany, not available in France. So it's not available in Europe for, I don't know, Google, why is it not available in Europe? At least it is available if you look here in Antarctica and at least here where is something nice here in Azerbaijan. So those people are lucky to have access to the latest Google. Now, you know, we can go here, of course, to Vertex AI by Google Cloud. And there we have it, a model named Gemini 1.5 Pro. And as you see, we have a maximal token of 1 million token input and output. Note, please, that the maximum output token is limited to 8K. The maximum raw image size is 20 megabyte. And the maximum images per prompt is 3000 images per prompt. What is nice, if you analyze videos, you have a maximum video length of one hour. And if you have audio length, it is about 8.4 hours for Gemini 1.5 Pro. And here I have to believe Google because, as I told you, it is not available in Europe yet. Beautiful. But of course, we are looking here also at different LLMs. I have here in my YouTube tab on Community, I showed you here the Command R Plus performance. Then, of course, we have for Mistral, the community has here on Hugging Face, the new Mistral pre-trained only, 8x22B version 0.1. And then we have now for two days, I think, from Hugging Face, we have a fine-tuned Mistral 8x22B, and it is called Sapphire. And we do not go with the classical uh, SFT plus DPO process, but here we have the new Orpro process that combines those two fine-tuning and alignment processes for a 141 billion free trainable parameter model. And you see the performance data and the causal reasoning performance in my YouTube channel under the Community tab. Beautiful. But of course, if we talk now here about 1 million input token, this means we have 30,000 lines of code or 700,000 words. And that is quite a lot, I would say. So if we look now here at the code side, you see here we have now a new copilot in Snowflake. We have OpenDAV and we have FWE. But now with this not in Europe available, Gemini 1.5 Pro that is in public preview globally, except Europe, the new code assist by Google. Now, if you have 30,000 lines of code content length and the other code, whatever you like to call it, are opting out at 12K, this is a three time jump here in the maximum amount of code you can input. Now, the performance latency, this will be really interesting to compare, but more about this in a later video. Beautiful. Yes, and of course, we have from Kruhia also not just the command R+, but we have a new re-rank LLM, re-rank 3. So this is a specific foundational LLM compatible with any database, with any search index, can be plugged into any legacy application where you have search capabilities. And they designed it here by Kruhia, especially here, for an enterprise search functionality with a 4K context length. And they say this will improve significant the search quality for longer documents because you don't have to chunk up the documents here into, I don't know, 200 words or maybe 300 words. But with 4K context length, they say this model improves. Yeah, if we look here at Gemini 1.5 Pro with 700,000 words, well, this is another topic. And they say it was especially trained here for a RAG application, not only limited to pure text, but also to semi-structured data, invoices, JSON documents, code, tables, and you get it. Now, of course, there's a price difference between re 3 and unavailable 
Gemini 1.5 Pro in Europe. <clears throat> so whatever you make out of this, if you want to find here a sleek but powerful solution, maybe this 4K context window is all that you need. Beautiful. Of course, we had here the Google Cloud Next 24, the keynote, and they also showed us here with Gemini 1.5 Pro, now the video generation is coming. So not anymore only Sora by OpenAI, but now with this powerful Gemini 1.5 Pro, you can create videos. You have text to videos, text to images, and, and, and whatever you wish for, it should be there. So let's come to a conclusion. Interesting in here, the Google presentation of the ecosystem was something that it is, makes it really nice for user, for the daily user. And I don't know how many, let's call it normal people will use AI systems or non-AI experts. And you know, I think Google showed us here something real beautiful. You are in your Google Drive and your Google email or whatever you are, and then you see here on the right hand side, as you know it from Microsoft, for example, you have then your Gemini 1.5 Pro or Ultra, whatever you have, whatever you will pay for. And you have here, for example, in your drive, your project documents, a proposal here, another proposal and a compliance rule book. And then what is nice here in your Google Drive, for example, you just say, hey, summarize the file suppliers compliance rule book. So this document, I don't know, 70, 100 pages more. And you see Gemini works here within your local Google Drive, which I think is nice. And then you can say, hey, and there are the two proposals. First proposal is from company A, second is from company B. Both com proposals include information about the project scope, pipeline, resources, deliverables, and cost in same structure data. So it reads tables, it reads here figures, whatever. And then you say, compare the price of the two offers. And now this is nice. Imagine you have here your documents on your drive or your email account or whatever. And you have here directly here this possibility. So you don't have to scan 100 pages of documents and compare and look where is all the information. If Gemini 1.5 is really able to do this, and I haven't tested it, so this is just here the public relation material from Google, but the idea is nice. Beautiful. And then of course, if you are working somewhere here in a Google document and you say, hey, this is what I got and just want to see, hey, does this offer by a company comply here with my company specific data with my company specific rule book. For example, here the supplier compliance rule book. You can have this either on your Google Drive or you have it here on your Google database from your company database. And this is all that it needs. You have your natural human English language. You say this, hey, check if this is really in compliance with our company guidelines and you get an answer back. So Gemini has here the access here also to databases and so on, or just files that you have on your server, on your drive, wherever. If this is such a nice and neat implementation, I think everybody can use this, even very small businesses, or maybe even for private use. If you have a lot of text documents or a lot of tables and you want to compare this, if you're a researcher, if this is available here on the infrastructure that we know from Google, and this is not too expensive, I think Microsoft, who offers this to a certain extent here with its co-pilot implementation, if Google will do it right, or maybe it will achieve to do this right at a compatible price, I think this is really an attractive offer for the AI integration into a complete ecosystem. And this is it. I think I summarized here the last five days that I was looking for. So I hope that I'm up to date. But if you have anything that I forgot, please leave me here a note in the comments of this video. And it would be great to see you in my next video.